everyone and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer board game review and today's game up on the tabletop is called Testament by Jap Anime Games and Manifest Destiny. The game plays one to four players, it's cooperative, it takes about an hour for each scenario and there's multiple scenarios in the game that you can play either separately or all in one as a campaign. In the game Testament, basically what happens in the story is an arc, this large ship, basically crashes down onto this mountainous peak and down below is a town and in the town there's a king and the king decides that he wants to send explorers and teams to go and study the Ark because the Ark has unfathomable technology inside and things that they can use to develop their own culture. Now unfortunately after many years of desperate research and attempting to explore the Ark, many failed attempts of exploring it have undergone and many many lives had been taken and so finally the king decided you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and ha have people go and explore it themselves and I'll pay a high ransom for the people that can explore the deepest darkest depths of the Ark. So, one of the lead characters, and this guy over here, Holland, decides to gather his crew of people and go into the Ark and attempt to dive down deep, fighting the monsters and the bosses, and hopefully finding the very bottom, deepest, darkest, most evil boss, Testament, defeating it, getting out alive, and receiving that King's Ransom reward. We'll talk about the game down below, what you get in it, and how a basic idea of how to play, and then we'll come up and I'll tell you whether or not you should pick up this game for yourself, currently on Kickstarter. Welcome to the Ark and the game Testament, and it is already set up for one to four players, because regardless of the number of players playing the game, you're always going to get the four characters. Pel Paul Setti, you're gonna get Holland, you're gonna get, oh, I'm gonna try and not butcher this, Kukurito, and then the last one is Che Rumin. And each of the characters are basically gonna set themselves up with these special ability cards here. And you can choose to set them up however you want. Right now, we have a character like this guy here. He's a tank, he's got a taunt, he's got a defender, he's got a bolt and a cool hunt card. So he's kind of a mix of a tank with a little bit of damage. And this character over here is more of a mix of like damage as well as as ability or utility, a strong damage dealer, and a healer over here. When you start the game off, depending on the stage you're starting out, you're going to get a certain amount of cards. And so for instance, on stage one, you're going to get four level one cards, and then you're going to level up two of those cards. If you started on stage zero, you would get four cards at level one, and you would level one of those cards up. So we're on stage one, we get two level ups for each, so you're going to look at the top left-hand corner of each of the cards, 2A and a 2B, those are the two level 2 cards, and then simply two level 1 cards, Cool Hunt and Energy Bolt. The same will be said for this character and this one. However, there's one special character, which is this one over here for Che Ruman. She gets an additional level up, so she in fact has three level 2 cards. And in level 2s, you can choose A or B. There's kind of like this pyramid of sorts as to where you want to go, or talent tree as you guys might know. And then this one over here is an interesting one as well. Instead of the normal 4 abilities, which you always start off with, this character is going to get 5 of them. Uh, then you're going to, after you choose your abilities, you're going to look at the top right hand side and it's going to have a numerical value. You'll add those all up and then you're going to look at your main character card here and you're going to look in the right in the middle. And so this one here has got a one and a four. That's five. Minus two is three. So you're going to look in the middle there. It says two or three. This is the card you'll use. And the same will be said for each of these other characters as well. The higher the rank of card based on the number, the more HP you have, the more tanky you are, and you'll be able to do certain things depending on that. Main, mainly it's just tankiness though. So of course the ones that have a lower rank are likely the ones that are going to do more damage and the ones that have a higher rank are likely going to be healing and tanking. Then you've got these die here which you'll use every round which will gain you these little star tokens here which will give you the ability to utilize your cards in an even more spectacular fashion than just simply utilizing them. Over here we have the threat tokens here. The boss is going to dish threat out throughout the game and these are the three different types based on the board here depending on the boss boss's abilities is what the boss is going to do. These over here are called the debuffs and buffs and the debuffs are going to go onto the boss or maybe even the boss's minions and the buffs will go onto your characters which will basically be utilizing which will be basically a static uh, tokens that you can utilize throughout the game. They don't go away at the end of the turn and you can use them as currency. These are your aggro. Aggro is relatively important for your tank to have, or maybe even your healer. Got to keep them away from the squishies because in general, the boss and the boss's minions will be doing damage to the person who has the highest aggro. And in a lot of cases, the boss will actually remove aggro 
from specific characters that have the most aggro. The final different type of token here, other than of course the HP, is the tanking token. These are called shields. Shields will reduce the amount of damage dealt by the number of shields that you have, and then you're simply going to remove one from the specific character that took that damage. So if you take five damage and have three shields, it'll take two damage and remove a shield. And of course, the last little bit of tokens here, ones, fours, and tens, this is just HP, which we'll be utilizing for the boss, the boss's minions, and each of the characters. And each of the characters have a health value right in the middle of their card here. Uh, the character cards, so you got the rank, and then you're gonna have how many different types of tokens each character can have. Do you look in the to uh, top right side of uh, a little box here? It's gonna show you how many aggro you can have, how many shields you can have, and of course, the amount of buffs that your character can have. And each character is going to have uh, a different amount depending on their rank and what character it is. Then the next thing is you got the boss here and the boss is going to have his own or her own set of monster cards and you'll set them aside based on the top right hand side. You'll look at stage one and it'll show you right here stage one and then you're also going to take out from the other decks the other bosses or stages that you won't need. So two, three, four, and five will not be needed so you can just set these aside. These two decks over here are going to represent the stages zero, one, and two and then uh three, four, and five. So if you're playing with stage one, you won't need the red deck here. You'll just need this one here. Make sure you go ahead and shuffle it. After you've already set up your characters, you will not need these extra cards here for this specific stage. But after you beat the stage, if you want to continue playing the game, you can level up so you will be utilizing these as well. Over, uh, let's see, anything else we can talk about? This is the boss board over here, the last thing you probably want to talk about. Uh, up here is basically the amount of monsters or minions you'll have to deal with throughout the boss fight. And eventually when this gets to here, the boss is going to come out and there's three waves or three stages of the boss, which you'll be going from 10 HP, 10, 10. And if you can defeat all three of the stages of the boss, you're going to win the game. The boss will have specific threat things he'll be doing to you. This is the area in which we'll place boss cards. And you're also going to have a boss deck for those cards. In general, you're going to take the, the the four basic type of cards. So you'll have these four, the boss cards, and you'll look at the top right-hand side. It'll show you what the boss is. Go ahead and set these aside for the boss. And then there's four generic ones, which will attach to this deck, and you'll go ahead and shuffle it up to form the three stages, which we'll talk about in a second. And over here is, I guess, your energy meter, which basically will go up whenever you defeat a monster, whenever you defeat the boss, or whenever you roll an energy on the specific die here. Uh, when you get to the boss stage, you'll simply flip these cards over, and they're going to go into this specific area here at random. After you defeat the boss, you remove these guys here and put more down. But we'll talk more about that in the explanation of how to play the game. The last thing you need to know is down here is where all the minions go. And if minions go cross past this board of five, you'll start taking damage for every minion that crosses the board. But that's pretty much everything, except for this first player marker. I probably pretty sure you figured that out but regardless that is basically everything you get in the game testament and how everything basically functions let's go ahead and take it just down below now i will show you uh maybe a round or two of play and how it's going to feel for you and then we'll come up i'll discuss the game and highlight what's the great stuff and what's the more challenging or not so great stuff and then you can go ahead and check out the Kickstarter campaign today and see if you want to back it. So I went and removed everything we won't need for this specific stage of the game because most of the time you're probably only going to play one stage at a time and you'll come back and play more if you want to do the campaign mode. You don't have to. You can go throughout stage zero all the way to five if you'd like, but I'm going to imagine that's going to take anywhere from five to even ten hours to play depending on how many players you're playing the game with. To start off the game now, we have our characters and it's everything set up from what I told you previously. Let's go ahead and move this mark to the right one space. On this marker here, it shows you a three, and that means three monsters are going to come out of this deck, which you go ahead and shuffle, and then flip them over, and they flip over like this. There you go. And you're going to put them on the top portion of the board, because when they activate, or when they act, you'll push them off of the board. So right now they're on, which means that they're going to attack after everyone takes a turn. So we've got our three monsters out, and now we've got all of our characters ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead and choose a character. The first way you choose a character is the first person who's played or last person who's played an MMORPG or maybe watched an anime. You guys can kind of decide that. But I'll just go ahead and start off with um, Holland Mason. He is the leader of the party regardless, so we'll go ahead and utilize him to start the game off. And on your turn, you get to do one of two things. 
A, you can activate an ability, or B, you can rest. Those are the only two things you can do. There are four different abilities for each character, except, of course, this one here, which has five. And if you want to activate an ability, that's one you're going to choose. So let's go ahead and start the, the, the round off by rolling these die. And we're going to roll the die, and then we're going to add up these values here. So, for instance, we have two, four, and five stars. So we'll take these five stars here and put them in a pool for this round. And then we're going to re-roll any die that have this little arrow here. So we'll take these two and we'll re-roll again. Wow, two and four more stars with a total of what we can get is seven. So we'll roll this one last one again. Ah, and then we got this lightning bolt. So we'll move this track down to one. If it gets to 12, we'll have a spe special secret ultimate ability. Now we've got all our stars. This is done. You only reroll the ones that have an arrow. So we're going to assign these. We're going to go ahead and assign these to the different characters. Maybe I'll just go ahead and give him two. We'll give her one and we'll give this person two and this person two over here. After that, now this character is ready to go. So he's going to choose one of his two abilities. A, he can go ahead and take his action or rest. He doesn't need to rest, though, because resting will just basically unexhaust the character abilities that he's chosen to utilize. Uh, so let's see what he wants to do. Let's go ahead and taunt. Taunt's very useful for a tank. So what you do is whenever you turn the card to the side or exhaust it, you are then going to do whatever is in this specific box here. And in this specific box, it says you remove one, uh, one aggro from him. And then you add three aggro to yourself. Totaling five is all you can have. You're also going to do damage based on the number here, which is melee damage uh, or just damage in general. And unfortunately, he has zero. Additionally, what's cool, though, is based on the EMP value here, which is two, you can use these stars to choose these abilities to do them. And in this case, I can spend two of these stars to use this one time to give my attack plus one. And I can go ahead and choose a bad guy here to do a damage two. So I'll select this and I can go ahead and choose any of these guys, except if these characters here have this little symbol here, that means they're stealth and stealth characters cannot be hit unless the other characters are all stealth or there are no characters in play except for stealth characters. So I can choose between these two characters. Their HP is up here, and what they do goes across this line here. So we'll go ahead and choose the Minimite to take one damage. That's all this character needs to do. He's now out of actions, and it will move clockwise around the board. This character now has their opportunity to do something. Maybe they want to remove a threat from themselves and give themselves a shield, as well as maybe an additional shield. They could choose to heal characters for a total of four or even six, as well as, of course, gaining a threat or losing threat if they use their stars correctly. They can give people uh, buffs, as well as give, people, uh, give the monsters debuffs, which is just probably what we want to do right now. So we're going to go ahead and turn this to the side. We're going to spend that one star to give an additional uh, buff and or debuff. So that's going to give two debuffs or buffs. Now it says each, whenever each hero receives one of these buffs, they're also going to get a shield. But right now we're actually going to go ahead and put debuffs on the monsters. So that's going to be two because we use this ability once. So that means that this specific first ability is going to cancel out. So these guys won't be able to use that specific first ability, which is really good because they're very, very dangerous to use. Um, then we're going to go over here and this character is going to take their action and they have a lot of attack damage actions. So maybe we will do something like uh, this one here, which will remove a threat from themselves. That's two damage. And then this I can spend one to stun the target not the boss. So I'll spend one. I won't really need this. This is going to go away at the end of the round, but regardless, it'll do two damage and stun. So we'll choose this one here, which takes two damage and then it's stunned. So it falls off the board it means it's not going to attack next round. Or in fact, actually let's do it to this one because this one actually has a debuff. So he's not going to be able to attack this next round. Finally, the last character here, she's going to get to choose any of her abilities. And we'll go ahead and select this one here. He's got this uh, crypt Cryptonesis. So that's one damage. Also gaining threat. So she'll get two, uh, sorry, aggro. So she'll get two aggro because it says it right there. And then she's going to remove her two stars to do plus one target. Uh, and because that's a zero, she can do another one. And that one is plus one damage. And because she has Empower, she can do an additional plus one damage. So all of her attacks are three damage, and she can choose two targets, which is pretty, pretty cool. So she will go ahead and choose these three, uh, no, I guess just these two targets, and make them all take three damage. And this one's going to pass, and this one is going to survive.
If a character or a monster takes their full HP, they're going to lose that. They're going to go to the discard pile, and us as a party will gain one of these lightning bolts here. After everybody has taken their action, then it is going to be the monster's turn. These will slide over, and the monsters will enact their abilities, and they're going to go from left to right, and they're going to choose one person to lose. Whoever has the most threats is going to lose a threat, which would be this one here. Then this character is going to act now because they have debuffs, they're blocking that specific ability. So with this one here, it's going to give minus two threat and these two are tied, which means that you're going to go with the lowest rank. The lowest rank is the one that gets targeted, meaning this person is going to lose their two, uh, their, their two aggro here. And then the person with the highest threat is going to take three damage, which means this character here will take three damage. Uh, three from 28, not so bad and a good use for having that aggro. Then that's it. We're going to go back to the start of the round. We'll move this over one, and then that's going to trigger another monster to come out. And the round is going to progress like this, and these will stay turned to the side until you choose to rest, which will turn these back over. There's a lot of abilities, a lot of things you can do. We won't really go into all of that, but we'll talk about it a little bit during the review. But regardless, this is going to pass clockwise to the next player. You'll roll these die again. You're going to gain the stars. You're going to move this track up, and then you're going to fight again. And What's going to happen is eventually this marker is going to get to here. And when that happens, the boss dies. But just before we get to that, this one here, this little flame here, means that the monsters are going to come in and basically have haste. They're going to attack before you take your actions. These keys mean that when this marker moves to here, if you have no monsters, you're going to go ahead and take one of these HP tokens and place it here, which means the boss will take one damage every single round, up to additional of two damage if you can do, do really well. And then finally, when it hits here, that means the boss is going to come out. And the boss is going to come out. You're going to take this deck here. You're going to shuffle it. You're going to put out four cards. You're going to look at the numbers on the top here. This is a 1-1, one, one, so this will come out in front. A 1-3, one, a 1-5, uh, and then 8. And so lowest to highest. And then you're going to fight the monsters along with the boss. And the boss is going to function just the same way, but it's going to move every round across this track here. And if you're able to do the amount of damage required in the round, which is 10, you'll move the boss to the next phase. If not, and this tracker hits here, then basically what happens is it enrages and you all lose. But as you're going through this, you're going to go ahead and go down this little line here, as well as the monsters will attack, this boss will attack, and then it'll move around. And of course, it functions just the same way as the game does normally. But eventually here, hopefully you'll do your 10 damage and you'll move this like that. These will get discarded for the time being. You'll put out four more, and you'll go ahead and set it aside just like you normally would. Uh, one, seven, two, four, and six. This will start back over here, and the boss also won't attack. Oh, this is actually one of seven, so I think it'll go right here, right? But regardless, the, the, the boss is going to do the same thing once again. If you can do another 10 damage to it, this is going to remove again, and then you're going to look for just the boss-specific ones. And they'll, that'd be the little symbol right there at the top right-hand corner. Place here, and place here, place here, and place here. And then you're going to go through it one more time. If you can do, do, do 10 more damage to it, you're going to defeat the boss. And additionally, you have to beat all the monsters that are left over as well. And every single round, whenever every single time you beat the boss, you're going to add two monsters to the pool here. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. If you can get this tracker all the way over here, and you can choose a character to rest, that character can use their special secret ability. Some of them will do damage to all the monsters. Some of them will give your shields a big boost for all the characters. The healer will actually resurrect and heal everyone. And uh, some other ones will do some other cool stuff. Like this will do, uh, let's see here, remove all of the shields from the boss. And also it deals four damage directly to the boss, which is very, very useful. It's a one-time use, so it goes back to zero once one person has utilized it. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. There is a large stack of different monsters that are coming out throughout the game. The bosses are going to have those four specific ability cards as well as the four main ones. And they're going to be based, these ones are kind of based on the, the stage. So at stage one, they're not as powerful, but they get more and more powerful as the stages progress. And of course, these specific little guys here are going to come out when the boss's abilities say so because you're going to go down this track just like you would from left to right with these monsters and the last little thing is these specific abilities might say that a target gains a blue black or a red uh one of these threat tokens which are these guys here and they're going to do certain things and i have the piece of paper somewhere around here 
but I don't know where it is. But regardless, each of them is going to do something specific. Like, oh, whenever you take damage, you'll take an extra two for every single one of these red tokens here. Or for the black one, whenever your character taps to the side, you're going to take two damage. And that's basically the idea of it. So anyway, that is how you play the game. You'll defeat the monster. You'll go on to the next stage. You'll be able to level up your characters, getting new abilities. And uh, then you're going to hopefully be able to get to the final boss, which is Testament and defeat him. And if you do, you win the entire game of Testament. Caveats, caveats for Testament. A, I explained it probably oddly, but I did do it correctly regardless. So you have a character, he's got this taunt, which is a 2A. It's going to cost nothing to use the card. It's free to use the card. But if you want to, if you want to use any of the special abilities down here, it'll cost force, which are what the stars are. And it'll tell you how many of those abilities you can use down here on the bottom right. So this says that you can use the force abilities here twice. And then it tells you the cost for each of those abilities. So to use this plus one damage, it'll cost you four if you want to use it twice. And this remove a threat from yourself, it'll cost you two if you want to use it twice. You can use either one of them in any combination, it's provided that you only use it two times. All the cards will say things differently. But remember, this is free, and if you want to do this and you want to add that force, you can go ahead and do that as well. Remember, when you rest and all of your cards are turned to the side and you unturn them all if all of them are turned to the side you can't do your special ability you have to choose to rest when you have at least one card that is not exhausted to use that ultimate ability and always it goes back to the beginning the the also thing with stealth here uh, one thing i did goof on is with stealth characters you can't target them period if there are any other characters with uh, without stealth in the battlefield in the slots where the monsters go not including the boss so i actually put a debuff on this guy you can't even do that you can't attack them you can't put a debuff on them you have to get rid of the other characters or monsters first before you can do that and uh oh i want to talk about this one here as well there's certain characters that will actually let you move past certain phases to get to the boss fight quicker it'll also let you do damage to a mob and move those pieces of threat to different characters which can be very useful these are like utility classes um, now, let's talk about one other thing, which is these boss cards here, right? And you'll always be putting them in order from least to highest. The first time it's random, and then the next time it's the other four, and then the final time you just take out the main boss cards and put them in order. These cards actually have the ability to be debuffed as well, and after the boss goes in from phase one to phase two, you'll remove the debuff. So the debuff will go away at the end of a phase, but regardless, when you debuff a boss, it'll move between the cards and between the rounds, and basically, it will not make you do the top ability, it'll make you do the bottom ability if the boss does a debuff as opposed to the top ability, making it easier to defeat the boss. I always highly suggest put the debuff on the boss. And the threats actually have a piece of paper which explains the different threat tokens, what they do, just specifically for this boss here, which is called Greedy Mother. It says whenever suffering damage, you probably can't even read this, but whenever you suffer damage with the black threat, you're going to add that amount of damage to your, your character. The red one says at the end of a round, if you have three or more of the red threat tokens, you suffer six damage and remove them all. And the final one is at the end of the round, you suffer a damage, and if you have three or more of the blue threats, remove all threat. So that's how that one specific boss works. All the threats are always going to be the same for each round as far as colors go, but they're going to change in what the bosses do. And one final thing, let me go ahead and take this one here. Testament actually doesn't have a monster phase in the game, but they do have, it does have monsters for each phase. So you'll get uh, four monsters each time you push the boss at the very beginning, but there's no point from getting here to getting to the end to getting to fight the boss. So just a little caveat there, regardless, so he's very, 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 very challenging to beat. But I just kind of wanted to give you that little side note. Some of the stages will probably take a little longer than others based on how long it'll take you to get to the boss. You can play this game from the starting stage all the way to stage five. Or if you don't want, you just want to start yourself off with an insane challenge, you can just go ahead and play stage three, four, or even five if you want to begin the game. I highly, highly suggest you start with stage zero though and progress from there. I'm a pretty experienced gamer. I've played quite a few board games and it is quite a challenge. This game does present quite a challenge learning your, from your mistakes. There's a little bit of a luck factor in regards to rolling these die here, but it's actually not not really that bad because a lot of times when rolling these the, the die to get the little stars, you know, the force, we didn't even need it all half the time. Now we did we did need the abilities and sometimes we had to rest and whatnot and it was always a sense of urgency in the game, but the force wasn't always entirely necessary. And so sometimes we had extra force 
but always getting these little lightning bolts is great. And there's certain times where you'll want force and you won't get it, or certain times you'll want the bolts and you won't get it. So it does present that little bit of a luck factor in addition to what monsters pop out on the field. But a lot of this game comes down to tactics. I feel like I'm entering the world of an anime or a manga, going into those like JRPG style things. I feel like I'm part of the team, going in to the arc and dredging myself deeper and deeper, trying to defeat these monsters. I've gotten to play three of them now, and each one gets far more challenging. The I think the rulebook said you have a 10 to 20% chance of beating the game from the start to the finish. And I would say that's very, very accurate. The game says an hour or so for each of the different boss fights. It's probably a little longer, and depending on the number of players, it will probably be a little extra time. So I would even say an hour and a half for each one. That just provides more game time. Uh, one player, two player, three player, and four player. If you're playing one player, just play with all four of them. It's no big deal. You lose a character, you just keep going. When you lose a character, it doesn't come back. Specifically, if it's a rank one, it won't come back, unless you're playing the easy mode. But if it's a rank two, it will come back, but it'll de-rank itself. So depending on how much more difficulty you want to add, they don't come back unless you use certain ultimate abilities. Like for instance, this character here, she says when she ults, everybody takes uh, it gains 15 HP and you revive all down characters. Usually when you rev revive a down character, they will respawn the next round and they'll come back with their cards, but they'll be either deranked or they won't respawn unless you play that ult ability if they're at the rank one. That can be kind of irritating, I guess, when you're playing a four-player game if you have to sit out for a couple rounds, because the rounds can be a little lengthy, depending on how precise people want to be. And in this game, you really do want to make sure you're choosing the best options for your characters. But I think the sweet spot is probably two or even three players. Three players, that little extra character, so if one dies, you'll still have everybody playing something. And when you get down to two characters remaining and you don't actually have the healer, uh, or you get people down at rank one, it's going to be very very challenging and so it's very likely you'll be able to jump back into the game and start playing again if you're down to two characters but regardless it plays well one two three and if you want a little bit more of a glass like feel to the game four is just fine as well yes the boss does have its own deck as well as a standard amount of cards that it just comes in with every single boss but those cards actually increase the difficulty of each boss, and it makes sense as to why you'd put it in there. Because sometimes the, the card will say, like, oh, round one, it will deal, or stage one, this boss does X damage based on the stage number. So, oh, zero damage on stage zero? Not so bad. Five damage on stage five? Really, really bad. And so it kind of ups the difficulty of the boss just by putting those standard cards in. And works just fine, in my opinion, because they're very basic standard cards and you can actually kind of make a strategy around those cards to a certain degree as to how you play your abilities and for what characters you utilize them with the monsters as well present a unique interesting aspect where basically the monsters are hitting that person with the most threat but they're also removing threat from those characters forcing the tank to push more not threat sorry aggro pushing the tank to push more and more aggro and if he doesn't then unfortunately the squishier characters are going to start taking damage and if you're not careful certain characters in this game depending on how you build them can die in one round so you need to make sure your threat is balanced and you're prepared for what's coming and for the most part you know what's coming so it's just a matter of can you actually systematically figure out how to deal with it in a certain number of rounds the threat presents an interesting aspect too in fact i wouldn't even say interesting i'd say excellent aspect aspect by the fact that every single monster or boss utilizes threat in a different way and having to control those and move them around is very important because the more you start getting the more challenging the boss gets and the more likely you're going to lose so there's a soft enraged timer which is the threat there's a hard enraged timer which is the eight rounds for each for eight turns for each of the rounds and then of course if the boss just simply knocks you all out Overall Testament is beautifully designed. It has beautiful artwork. If you like Jap Japanese uh, anime, if you like manga, if you like watching those in in entering like, like Sword Art Online feel, you're gonna really dig this game. It's very challenging. It can be rather long. And there is times when you're not gonna know what's the best move. And it's going to require a couple playthroughs to figure out how the game fully, like how you can get fully professional at the game. I wouldn't recommend this for probably the most youngest of players unless they're willing to lose and continue to learn. But if you're a hardened gamer, even somebody who's got like a moderate party of people, 
give yourself a good amount of content for the game, you're going to dig this game. I personally really like this game. Grant really liked this game. Callie really enjoyed this game. Regardless, you should go ahead and check out down below. If you're interested, it's on Kickstarter. Go ahead and pick it up. Testament by Japanese Games and Manifest Destiny. It's it's a solid experience with a great storyline attached to it, and I just really dig it. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Testament by Japanese Games. This is fun game. I really enjoyed it, and I think you guys will too. Also, check out the link in the description for the pickup on Kickstarter right now. UnfilteredGamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're going to be playing games live every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST to about 9.30. And then every other Thursday, we come on here on YouTube and play games just like this one in the community. We give away games. We have a lot of fun. If you're interested, join the group. Join us. We have a lot of fun. We want you to be a part of that. If you're interested and want to go ahead and give us a comment down below, let us know what you think about this game. If this is something you'd want to pick up or who you would recommend this game for specifically, go ahead and do that as well. We always right back to our commenters regardless of if it's criticism or if it's uh popular the wonderful i don't know what the word is i i, I so i so seldom get them what are they called grant where you're like it's a positive thing compliments, compliments that's it we, we get those on vacation too all right guys thank you so much for watching and as always we look forward to what is it see you guys next time see you guys next time